Welcome to Marketing Made Simple TV. My name is Jeff Ogden, the host of this show, and we're really excited to have you back again for another great show. We're joined by not just one guest, but two guests today, Julie Schwartz of ITSMA and Laura Patterson of Vision Edge Marketing, and two really great marketing pros, and they have some really insights from a study they did recently called The Path to Better Marketing Results, and we're going to talk about that today. But first, I'd like to just have you tell us a little bit about yourself. Julie, could you start off? Sure. Uh, Julie Schwartz. I'm the Senior Vice President of Research and Thought Leadership at ITSMA. We're a membership-based organization. Uh, we work with the top technology consulting uh, and services companies in the world, and they come to join ITSMA to uh, network with their peers, uh, to learn, to uh, we do a lot of best practice research, uh, a lot of um, case studies, benchmarking, uh, do a lot of training, as well as consulting. Good. Laura, could you tell us about Vision Edge Marketing and what sure. you guys do? I'm Laura Patterson with Vision Edge Marketing, and our company, founded in 1999, focuses on using data analytics processes in order to help marketing organizations improve and prove the value that they bring to their organization. And we're very excited to be with you today. Excited to have you both. So you, uh, I understand Vision Edge Marketing and ITSMA collaborated on this particular study. Um, can you tell us about some of the insights that came out of the study, the path to better marketing results? Yeah, absolutely, and let's put it in some context. So we started this study in 2001. Wow. We've been doing this study uh, for a very long time okay. and had the opportunity to work with ITSMA this year and expand the study somewhat in terms of some of the questions and see if there might be any changes to what we've learned over the past decade. And the focus of the study has always included a question about how the CEO would grade its, their marketing organization on its ability to impact their business and demonstrate its value. And uh, we have always called the group that received a 90 or higher from the CEO the A marketers. So we have always had a group of A marketers and then, of course, using the grading system, B, C, and D marketers. And then we've always tried to understand what do these A marketers do better and differently than the rest of their peers. And so the focus of this year's study continued with that theme. And uh, this year, um, as in past years, we have about 25% of the marketers receiving an A from their CEO. And we had, it's an online study. This year we had over 400 people participate in the study. B2, predominantly B2B companies from all over the world in all industries. There aren't a lot of differences between uh, industries or size of company, so it's really interesting to see that that's not really what makes the difference and how these uh, marketers are evaluated by their C-suite. So then the question becomes, what do these A's do better and differently and what happens or is happening with the other marketers? So I'll kind of start off with what they do differently. And then Julie, help me chime in, and we'll go through them a little bit more in detail. So over the years, starting out, there were two primary A's that emerged in the beginning when we started the study. And they were alignment and accountability. So we call those the first two A's. And as the years have progressed, new A's or new uh, arrows have been added to the best-in-class marketers' quiver, so to speak. And last year, we talked about five A's. This year, we have six A's. A sixth A has emerged. And it's actually uh, uh, very interesting to see what these marketers continue to do to hone their capabilities and improve their proficiency around demonstrating their value, impact, and contribution. So the A's are alignment, accountability, analytics, automation, assessment, and uh, alliances. So those are the uh, six key A's, and uh, we would be happy to tell you about what those sure, mean and how sure. they do them. Uh, one interesting thing that you mentioned just that came out of the study is that the, the determination of their grade really isn't dependent on the size of the company or the industry they're in. And I think that's kind of surprising. A lot of smaller companies say, if I only had the resources of IBM or GE, we could do a great job of marketing. What, what did you learn about how that really isn't a factor. It's a non-factor. Yeah. What's your thought on that, Julie? Yeah, well, what, what we learned is that regardless of the size of company, what happens is that marketers are measuring a lot of stuff. 
-hmm. So they're measuring their marketing activity, and they're not necessarily measuring their marketing effectiveness or using their measurements to make course adjustments, to make decisions on how to make marketing better. And they're certainly not using their measurement to look at leading indicators. And so they're not able to look at the market more strategically and help make strategic recommendations. And as a consequence, they're not adding the value to the business. So they're, they're focusing more on counting, measuring marketing activity, and they're not really looking at the business outcomes. And yeah, those marketers that are the A marketers, they're really more focused on being business people. And they're more, regardless of what kind of industry they're in, and they're more focused on enabling the business to be successful using data, systems, and processes mm -hmm. in order to facilitate that. And so when they're evaluating and preparing how to communicate with the C-suite, they are really talking about how they are improving and managing performance, whereas the other marketers are more focused on managing their activities and doing stuff and producing things, and they're really more focused on measuring uh, what their output is and managing their metrics as opposed to managing their performance. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what size the company is, that's, you know, that, that's small so really, companies yes. are doing that, sure. large companies sure. are doing it, yes. and, you know, or small companies are focused on business outcomes, and large companies are. The one difference we did see, and this is where the, the budgets come in, is that the larger companies are much um, better funded in terms of being able to do more of the analytics, the stuff that you would consider more sure. of the big data. Sure. And so that, that's the only really difference that we see by size. Okay. But if you have that capability and you're not using it to tie to the business goals, sure. it's still not going to get you sure. where you need to be. Well, one of the things you talked about is automation. And one of the things I want to mention to our audience is we have a content offer on this, which is Revenue Performance Management Demystified by the Aberdeen Group. Eloqua, who sponsors our show, has that. And if uh, the viewer wants to click a button at the top of the screen, they can download that particular document by Aberdeen Group. Maybe it would be helpful to walk very quickly in a summary of what these A's are, because just the name themselves may not really give it of very course, much insight. Of course, yes. What are the characteristics that define an A marketer? Well, right? let's talk about the six A's and sure. how they're using them. So the very first one, which is alignment, is about those A marketers being able to demonstrate direct line of sight between marketing activities and investments and business outcomes. And they start at the top. They really understand the business needles they have to drive and impact. And then they set appropriate um, expectations around their contribution all the way down into the tactical level. So they have some methodology in doing that. Accountability, the second A, is really around the metrics and the dashboards they use. So the metrics they use are more outcome-based as opposed to output-based. Uh, they really, again, focus on making their metrics meaningful and answering the so what question for the C-suite. And their dashboards are different. So the other marketers might have dashboards. They might even use some of the pre uh, pre-planned or canned dashboards sure. that are inside their systems, but that's not really what the A's do. The A's use their dashboards and build dashboards that help make course corrections and strategic recommendations, as opposed to providing sort of, here's what we did information. And they're looking at their metrics and their dashboard beyond just what they've put in terms of leads. They're really thinking about the big picture. Uh, and when they're talking about how marketing is impacting and generating value for the organization in terms of market share, in terms of customer value, in terms of customer equity, and customer retention, uh, customer, those kinds of things are very customer oriented and customer centric. Um, and their dashboard reflects that as well. Their automation, A, is interesting. Their automation really isn't just about the tools they put in place. In fact, they don't ask the question first, what tools should I buy? But ask more involved, what kind of systems uh, and processes do I need in order to be effective? And so they're thinking much, again, bigger. And they're thinking about the skills that they're going to need to have to leverage those systems and processes. Their analytics, to Julie's point, are thinking about uh, the data. And so they use their alignment of business outcomes to marketing investments to help them understand what kinds of data they're really going to need to have 
and where they're going to get that data from, and then building out the analytics in order to support whatever decisions they're going to need to be able to make, or um, and building models. So one of the cool things that came out of the research is that the A's are much better at building models than the than their peers. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, and what was interesting is they may be using special statistical tools to do that or spreadsheets, you mm. know, but they're still building the model. So that even if they don't have the funding for the tools, they're doing it. The real big difference is that the, the, the C and D marketers, they're not doing it at all. They're mm. not even using spreadsheets. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. One thing just to clarify what you're talking about, when you talk about A marketers, you're talking about people who scored 90 or higher from That's their correct. CEO. But then you're talking about the other A's or the characteristics of those high-scoring marketers, yes, exactly. right? So, so you use a lot of A's there. We are a using confused. a lot of A's. It could be easy to get confused. So just yeah. think of those A marketers as the best-in-class marketers sure. or the elite group of marketers, and that these um, A's are the things that sure. help them be successful and help them earn that okay. grade. Sure. So the other uh, A's, uh, so we've covered uh, analytics, automation, alignment, and accountability. The other two A's are alliances and assessment. Um, assessment is an, old, is an previous A, and these, you know, it would make sense. These best-in-class marketers don't rest on their laurels. They're always looking for ways to improve. They're not afraid to identify their gaps, and they're not afraid uh, to, to, you know, use a test and learn culture to figure out what, need they, what they need to do better. So they're very open, and they're experimental, and they don't mind being audited. Whether they do that themselves, they use a third party, um, they are, use organi you know, organizations um, like ITSMA mm -hmm. and others. Sure. Um, and the brand new A uh, is alliances. And um, what these A's are doing is they are really formalizing their collaborative relationships with sales, IT, and finance. It's not just on an ad hoc basis or an interim, you know, something that, uh, an occasional thing. It's a formalized uh, relationship they might have very specific people designated to them. Those people are part of their uh, everyday work and everyday processes. They participate in uh, decision making, planning meetings, those kinds of, of examples. Okay. Uh, very different from, again, uh, the rest of the pack. Yeah. Did you want to add on yeah, so, to that? So one of the uh, interesting things that we saw in the research is that the best in class A marketers actually had better integration of their CRM systems with their mm. marketing automation systems. Okay. And so that, that really demonstrated that they have better relationships with their salespeople as well as the IT people and then the finance people since they're the ones that most you know, likely sure. hold a lot of that data. Sure. You know, you're so I, dependent upon yeah. those three groups, it just makes sense to work collaboratively Absolutely. with them. Absolutely. I just want to say that I, I like to think that a-class marketers are always trying to improve and always trying to learn. So they join organizations like ITSMA and they watch shows like Marketing Made Simple TV. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. It's exactly, exactly true. Yep. So, and they use yeah. firms like Vision Edge Marketing. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I got to get that one in there too. Yes, absolutely. Let's talk, Julie, I want to ask you a question. Okay. There's a, a tug of war that always goes on in marketing between, okay, we need to acquire customers. Our salespeople are demanding leads. Yep. But we, we want to invest time in understanding our buyers. How are, a, how are better companies dealing with that? And how is that changing over time? Yeah. Well, you're absolutely right, Jeff. This is a struggle. And it's something that we've seen change over time. You know, okay. Years ago, there was more investment in understanding our customers, understanding sure. the market and the buyer behavior. And what we've seen with the, the economy is that money has gotten tighter. And one of the first things that marketing has cut is the research. And they've kind of lost sight of the primary goal of marketing is to understand the markets and the buyers, to be that window into the, you know, that, that what the customers are doing. And they've lost sight of that because there's been such a focus on acquiring customers. And so there's less of that understanding. And it means that the marketers are not really driving innovation mm. like they used to. Okay. And it, it hampers their ability to be more strategic. They're focused, you know, almost myopic, on looking at the pipeline and how mm -hmm. can we get more leads into the pipeline. 
And I want to add on to that. You know, we've been doing uh, sort of this reveal of the results sure. to key constituents over the last uh, month now. Okay. And uh, one of the c questions that's come up a few times is, well, maybe we don't need to do that research anymore because we can just uh, get that information from our social, you know, from social media. Sure. And, and so one of the things that we've had recently discussed is there's a very big difference between listening and bringing in information uh, from the digital world versus actually conducting formal research. Sure. And that uh, good marketers uh, and the A marketers recognize that one of the areas that they're going to need to improve on is customer insights, whether that's through voice of customer, CAVs, and formal uh, types of research initiatives that give them more insights into customer behavior and the customer buying journey. Yeah. I think, and I've had some personal experience with this, of you just pick up the phone and call a customer, <laughs> and it's amazing you ask a few questions what you can learn. And it's so quaint and antiquated, but it works. Something, right? to, be, something to be said for the in-depth interview. Exactly. <laughs> just an interview. Pick up the phone and call them. It works. Yeah, they'll tell you amazing amounts of information. So, really good. Let's talk again about the 90% the, the scores, the people who are, you know, ace that SAT, right, <laughs> yes. in marketing. How are they, what are they doing to improve? You know, they, you say that the A marketers always want to get better. What are you seeing them doing? Okay, that's really great. Um, so the very first thing that these guys figured out to crack the code was the A or alignment uh, A, the, that particular effort. And in fact, that has the largest statistical significance between those marketers who get an A, and also in their ability to demonstrate their linkage to the business. And so that means that they craft marketing plans that are in a different way than the, the rest of the pack. Their marketing plans, while they may, might be in a PowerPoint, they might be in a Word document, they might be using our methodology, which creates a blueprint, have very clear relationships between here's these business needles we're driving, and not, not a number like here's our revenue goal for next year, but very specific business outcomes. And then well-defined steps below that related to marketing objectives, which are highly measurable in very outcome-oriented terms, strategies with very specific performance target programs, sure. and then all of the tactics and activities below that. And it's very clear, direct line of sight. And so if there's any kind of issue, it's negotiated right at the very beginning. So there's clarity between the leadership team and them as to what marketing is actually going to be doing to move the needle and how far that needle needs to be moved and how marketing's success is actually going to be measured. And it's not really about here's the new Facebook page we're going to launch or here's sure. the new webinar we're going to okay. create or the new demo or these are the five trade shows we're sure. going to this next coming year. Okay, interesting. So that's one. Sure. Um, and uh, the second thing uh, clearly that they're doing, uh, and I'll go, well actually two other things, uh, the second thing is around the types of metrics they use. So their okay. metrics are very uh, outcome oriented. They're really around the business results that they're driving as opposed to the things that they can count. So counting, you know, the number of people who um, downloaded a demo or visited a website or f followed or fanned you, interesting but not useful, right, in terms of the leadership team. Might need it for your own marketing work. Uh, decisions, but not really what is going to answer the question uh, for, for the C-suite as to marketing's contribution. So they're getting metrics that are much different. They might be looking at uh, win-loss analysis, for example. They might be looking at number of new conversations created. Uh, they might be looking at uh, customer share of wallet mm -hmm. or share of preference. Those kinds of metrics, very different than, uh, you know, Right, I produced right. five webinars this sure, this quarter, sure. or I had um, fifty, you know, five hundred registrants to the webinar. I'm not really sure how valuable that is, right? Sure. Um, so that's the second area. The third area, and so and their metrics are very clearly related to each other. Okay. Then that's another thing that's different. Their data, they they understand their data. Their data, they have data inventories. They know where their data is, where it's stored, what sources it, how frequently okay. it's updated. They sure. know that about their data. 
Okay. Um, and they're managing their data. And sure. So that makes them, I think, okay. uh, more successful. You let me, add let to me uh, just ask a different question because I think a lot of uh, B and C marketers would like to get to be A marketers. Mm -hmm. Where do they start? We want to we want to share some really actionable information with our audience of things they can do right away. Julie, can you tackle that question? Yeah, yeah. so where, where they need to start is really with the alignment piece okay. that Laura just spoke about. So that they need to understand what is the business trying to achieve. Okay. And then from that, forming their marketing objectives and then get to all the stuff that they're going to do. So there okay. needs to be a way of uh, following the line from all the stuff right up to the objectives, but starting with the business objectives. Because what, what the, the okay. laggards do is sure. they start with all the stuff. I want to do this many events this year. I want to produce this many brochures. Sure. Okay. And that's where they really fall off. So the real takeaway here is to back up, look at the big picture. What Absolutely. are we trying to accomplish here? What is our business objective? You know, who are we selling this to? What value do we offer? You know, coming up right. with those big questions. Laura, what, what do you, are the top two or three things you think our audience should do to get started on a program to move up. Well, I'm always surprised when people call me and they call regularly and say, you know, and say all different kinds of things about their marketing plan. And well, the first question I always ask them is, what are the three to five business needles you have to move? And they might give me a revenue number. That's not the business needle. That's what the business needle will produce. Right. <laughs> right? Yes, yes, so yes. I always say, what are the three to five business needles the marketing has sure. to, that the organization has to achieve to declare success by sure. you know, in 12 to 18 months? And the second question is, which of those are you does the leadership team expect marketing to contribute to? And how much impact are they expecting marketing to due to that sure, business needle, sure. and how will marketing success be measured? And you would be surprised at how few marketers have that conversation with their leadership team. And if you can engage in that conversation with your CEO, your CFO, your CSO, you're going to be well ahead of, the, of, of those laggards. It's interesting because we've done a lot of these shows, and a mm -hmm. recurring theme from a lot of the great guests we've had on the show is the need for marketers to look at the big picture and build relationships, especially, I, I'm glad you mentioned the CFO, because if, if there's one person in the business that I think a marketer should become good friends with is your chief financial officer, Agreed. because they have the respect of the CEO. So you should be on the same page there. I think one of the other things that the laggards tend to do more of that the A's don't is that the laggards are always chasing the next shiny toy. Uh, and in marketing, we always have a new shiny toy. You know, I've been in sales and marketing for 30 years. I, I won't speak to how long Julie and Jeff have been in marketing, but both of all of us have been in marketing a long, marketing and sales a long time. And there's sure. always a new shiny toy, right? And uh, you know, it, at one time it was the web, and then it was SEO, right? Sure. And then it was. Hope to anybody remember wikis and that we chased yes, those. Remember yes, that. Yes, yes. And then it's been social, and then it, you know mobile, and and now we're into big data. Sure. And, and so we're always chasing the next shiny toy. And the laggards are m much more, you know, whether that's Facebook or whatever that is, sure. much more likely to think that they need that, that there's this silver magic bullet in the shiny toy. And sometimes it's really just the fundamentals of really good, solid strategic right. and product marketing. And I think the A's know how to do that. And that's mm -hmm. about really being having business acumen. Right. And so that's a okay. big distinction. Yeah. Sure. And I think it's a really good point. One of the questions we get all the time is uh, sort of the silver bullet. What is the, the marketing channel that's going to be most effective for me to reach my, my target audience? And that's not the right question to be yeah. asking. Yeah. And that's where they start. So what questions should they be asking, Julie? I think it's the questions Laura said. Okay. What are you trying to accomplish for the yeah. business? What yeah. are your executives expecting you to do? Sure, sure. Okay. Well, i got to tell you, I, it's been a great discussion. And where can someone go to get the results of this study? So the uh, we each have a, uh, an abbreviated uh, version, an abbreviated okay. summary on sure. our website that's free. Ours is in uh, the visionedgemarketing.com uh, resources called Free Stuff section. Uh, yeah. and, and, and for us, it, it, you can find it at itsma.com. And if you happen to be an ITSM, uh, ITSMA, see, I do it too. There you go. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Member, uh, you can get, and you participated in the report, the report is avail available to you complimentary. Sure, sure. And for those who didn't, 
they can purchase the report, which is uh, Path to Better Marketing Results. It's available for sale from both of us. Okay. You can get that in our store or online from ITSMA. So sure. um, there's all different ways depending on you know what degree of information you want. And A marketers are going to buy the report. I bet they will. <laughs> well, and would be A marketers will buy that report too. So yes, those ambitious B and C marketers will buy that report. Yep. So I would certainly suggest that people um, download the Aberdeen uh, document, um, which you press a button at the top of the screen to get it from Eloqua on Revenue Performance Management Demystified. ITMSA, Oops, ITSMA, <laughs> we did it again. Oh, I'm sorry. Check out that organization and, of course, Vision Edge Marketing. Thank you for having us, Jeff. I, I've really thank enjoyed you so having much. you both on Marketing Made Simple TV. So I want to thank our guests on Marketing Made Simple TV. Check out our, our sponsors on the show, which are on the screen. And we, Marketing Made Simple TV publishes every Thursday at noon Eastern. And it is at marketingmadesimple.tv and all of our syndication sites. So until next week, we'll see you next time on Marketing Made Simple TV.